I think she's angry. Hi, my name is Vitamin D. Stan, and welcome back to some Cafe Stella. Yeah, it's not King Koi. It's okay. Next episode, maybe. Maybe. You know what? I told myself that I would try to focus more on the YouTube channel, so good luck to me on that. But I'm still not going to make any promises on video quantities just because you never know what happens in life. You know? What if I lose a lag or something? Oh, God. I really hope I don't lose a lag. Oh, God. Imagine having to hop around. <laughs> oh, God. Face when the zombie's wrath, I'm forced to kneel on the ground in front of her. That's odd. Even though I have the talisman with me, I feel like I'm in extreme danger right now. Don't ask me. I have no clue. Sometimes things just turn up where you least expect them, you know? Try to gloss over the situation. Zomin shouts, oh boy. Domestic violence is no joke. Slamming her desk with her palm. Come on, I know you're not actually going to. <laughs> She's such a baby. Wait, you're seriously crying? <laughs> The most dramatic maiden in a visual novel I've ever seen in my life. That's insane. How old is she again? Over 20? <laughs> oh, Alright, that's enough. Look, I'm sorry, okay? I'm sorry, Nazamin. I quickly prostrate. Prostrate? Oh no. Myself and apologize. Good grief. I love her, but she can be a real handful sometimes. A lot of times. <laughs> this behavior cannot be normal. I do, and I'm sorry for betraying you like that. I know you were just worried about me. But you have to understand, I was incredibly worried about you too. <laughs> I still shouldn't have tricked you though. I'm sorry. I bowed my head repeatedly to the floor. Got over it that quick? Okay. Uh, I raised my head to find that the Zomans also gotten down on her knees and hugged me. I wrapped my arms around her as well. But dum but dum. I can feel the beating of her heart through my skin. It's my job too. After all, I love you. <laughs> no, don't. Hmm? I let out a sh strange yelp as she suddenly kisses my cheek. <laughs> you caught me off guard. Give me a bit of a warning next time. No, please. Oh? This time she kisses me twice, once on the cheek and once on the neck. <laughs> My face grows hot with embarrassment. Weren't you just crying? She peers into my face. Dang it, she's totally toying with me. Not wanting to meet her gaze, I turn my face away. Alright, that's enough. Show me the book you found. No, I just want to start reading, that's all. Putting an end to the conversation, I turned my attention to the old book Nozomi borrowed and began to read. The history of this town. The book... What? The publication notes indicate that it had been written in April of 1868. Nozomi scoots in close so we can look at the book together. Yeah, even older than the ones we found in my college's library. There may be some new information in here. Akaiwa Shrine. Akaiwa Shrine. I flip each page with the utmost care. The paper is deteriorated enough as it is. Too much force and I could easily rip it apart. You should totally update books like that. Wow. It takes up an entire chapter. A surprising amount of text had been dedicated to the subject. Perhaps the shrine was a lot more famous back in the day? 
back in the slavery days in America in 1860-something. I don't know if it was around 1860-something, but perhaps the shrine was a lot more blah 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 blah. The woman, Akaiwa, had risked her life to protect her daughter from the clutches of a fearsome god. Whoa. Sorry, I had read that it said that she had killed herself, but I don't think she killed herself. And so the villagers erected a shrine in her honor in order to appease Akaiwa's vengeful spirit. Though the story had begun much the same way Rokuro-san's version had, the latter half had ended very differently. Okay, did I misread something? Hold on. <gasps> this is the first time ever I mean to do it on purpose. Alright, let's see here. I might have misread something. Uh... The origins of Akaiwa Gami, the god of the Akaiwa Shrine, can be traced back to the story of a woman who had lived during the late Edo period. Body, why are you always making weird sounds when I'm recording? The woman, Akaiwa, had risked her life to protect her daughter from the clutches of a fearsome god. But having incurred the god's wrath, her daughter was abducted and Akaiwa herself was killed. Okay. It was a terribly tragic tale. Reading it had left an unpleasant aftertaste in my mouth. After finishing the rest of the chapter, I closed the book. A heavy weight had settled into the pit of my stomach. I'd probably trust that book more than anybody. I don't say anything. It probably is true, I think. This is the oldest account of the story we could find, and more importantly... Yep, what I was thinking. Are you saying... You're the god of this shrine? There has to be a good reason why she can't be direct and be like, okay, here's what I want, or this happened, and this is why this, you know what I mean? That's crazy. God killed you? Here? Hold up. Wait a minute. So what does this mean? Wait, what? What? It's almost bedtime. <sighs> this lines up with the conversation we had with the red butterfly. She had fought back against the fierce god using the immense power of her soul. She had tried to change the world, tried to defy the will of the gods, and prevent them from taking her daughter. Which means. The red butterfly must be waiting for the return of her abducted daughter. It all makes sense. Let's calm down for a minute, Nozomi. Her daughter's probably a freaking water filly or something. <laughs> I give my teary-eyed girlfriend a gentle hug. I want to do something to help her too. But like Chiki-san said, this happened more than 300 years ago. Her daughter would have passed away a long time ago and her soul reincarnated in another being. Even if we wanted to search for her? Oh my god, how crazy would it be if the daughter was one of the maidens in this game? That actually would be insane. Probably. Bro, how? 300 years is a whole lot of patience. That I can never achieve. Never. Not humanly possible, at least. No way. Uh-oh. 
There we go again. Nozomi. Nozomi sobs into my chest. She's crying out for herself, but for someone else. For the red butterfly. Despite everything, Nozomi pities her. I stroke her head and her back. You're such a kind person, Nozomi. I've always known that, but it's clearer to me now more than ever. I'm sorry, though. This is all I can do right now to comfort you. Sorry for being such a useless boyfriend. Ah, oh, come on, dude. No. But well, we still have time. Not a lot, but some. I'll do whatever it takes to see you smile. So please, don't cry. Huh? My own voice is getting choked up. I am? Nozomi softly strokes my cheek with her finger. A clear drop of liquid had wet her fingertip. Well, I feel bad for the red butterfly too, of course, but... Embarrassed, I stay silent. But that silence is an answer enough. Don't be crybaby or not, I love you. Not like I could just leave you alone now, could I? Finally, you're smiling again. She has to have, like, bipolar disorder or some crap. This isn't normal. This is, like, the switches in this very ama little amount of time is just insane to me. No. Something's up with this one. Tread carefully, Kosei. Glad to hear it. Hmm? Her cheeks turn red as she hugs me. I can feel her heartbeat getting faster. Zomin. I place my hand against her huge chest. No longer do I need to ask her if she wants to do it. I can read the signs by now. I don't need to embarrass her by making her say it out loud. May I fondle them diabetes? <laughs> Oh my god, I can't wait to use that one day in the future whenever, if, and when I find my wife. Like, may I fondle thy bitties? <laughs> oh my god, so dumb. Alright, we got emotional, so we just had sexy time again. That was crazy. See what I mean? It went happy, sad, happy, sad, emotional, sad, horny. What? Pretty nuts if I do say so myself. Oh, sorry, Kana. I'm talking over you. Kana. 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 Interesting name. Kana. It's a fun name. I like that. The next morning. Zomen and I report our findings to Akizuki Sanai Mikado. のぞみを祟る理由も明確になった。え、でも私を祟っていることには神に殺され、娘を奪われ、怨霊と化したのなら繋がるではないか。I Aguzuki-san voices the same doubts that Nozomi and I shared. Kanna, nani wo amai koto itte oru. Aite wa 300 nen mono nagaki ni watari, kono yo ni isuwari tsuzuketa kyouryoku na ashiki tamashi da zo. Chimi mouryou to itte mo yoi sonzai da. Dang, Mikado is very sure about it. Now he has me like doubting also because I too, like those three, have doubts that she's actually a bad spirit. Or a good spirit, excuse me. But the fact that he's so sure about it really makes me doubt myself. None of us have any counter to that. The fact is, Nozomi had been put in danger twice. She's been haunted by the red butterfly the entire time. All the evidence points in one direction. Well, vengeful spirit or not, if we were to give the red butterfly what she's been looking for, will that finally put her to rest? 
300年前に生き別れになった娘さんを探したいと当たり前だがとっくにこの世にはおらんぞ I know, but what if we find a person she reincarnated in there? Even if she's in a different body, her soul must still exist somewhere on this earth, no? Shosoku, w a k a r i m a s e n k a Tadoru koto wa kano na hazdaga. Sambiak ne mai ma de saka no boru to naruto. Bodai na joho lio da. Three hundred years? How many generations are we talking? Presume that the average human life is like seventy or eighty years. Let's do eighty, one sixty, two forty, like. Three, four generations. Let's just say even five generations. Five generations of people. For. Bro, that, <laughs> that's crazy. She's a cat. What was I gonna say? So, something popped up as I was reading this about this whole supernatural thing because I think it's very interesting.、Um, that's the one thing that I really like. About this game over King Koi. And that probably also has a lot to do with the fact that I've been reading King Koi a lot longer, more consistently recently. So that's why I've been jumping into this game a little more recently. But, oh, excuse me. This whole supernatural thing is very interesting. And I was just thinking about how in other routes, like for example, in Shiki's route or in Suzuna's route, there was really hardly any talk about supernatural. But this route has been a whole lot of talk about supernatural. And honestly, it has made me like this route. A lot, like almost probably, if not as much as Shiki's route, which says a lot because as you guys saw when I had played the route, I was really into her character and her story, you know. But something tells me I might, might, I might, might, might like this route more than Shiki's just because of this whole supernatural thing and the whole like history behind the shrine and blah blah blah. blah. Like, I just find it so very interesting, but without. Any hesitation, I could tell you that Nozomi is definitely not my favorite character so far. Probably Shiki. Work on that. But, anyways, back to it. Still, would you be willing to try and find her? It was the fierce god's fault. God's fault that Kaiwa became a vengeful spirit in the first place. The red butterfly is just the victim. I want to save her. Zomi bows her head at the other two. Oh, my touch. Nidomo Kiken Namini Asarita to you. Tonda Ushito Yoshida Mikado san, so not Srenaiko to Iwazani, Kyoryo Kusta Gemasho. That cute little cat do be pretty cold. Yare, yare, Mata Kunya, what Tetsia Ka Konokariwa Takaizo, Takamine Kose. Don't worry. We'll help you shave your balls. Mikado sniffs, scratching his head. <laughs> Thank you, Mikado. Nozomi holds up a rather expensive looking cat brush. Where'd she even get that from? So funny to me that a cat with such a deep voice is a thing. Like, I wonder what the voice actor thought about this. He must have thought this was hilarious. Because it is.、Uh, Do you want dry kibble, Mikado? Yeah, t a n No hesitation at all. <laughs> He looks dead serious, too. <laughs> I'm sorry for asking so much of you. Bro, that's quick. <laughs> that's quick. So, when the talisman's protection runs out and we confront the red butterfly for the second time. Yeah, we're gonna freaking kill that thing. I was kind of hoping they would kill it too, to be honest. Just a, just, ow, ow, just a little bit. Because his tone takes on a faint but sharp edge. I know. My number one priority is still Nozomi's safety. If our plan fails and the red butterfly continues to haunt Nozomi, I don't want to say it. But I forced the words out nonetheless. Then please, eliminate her. 
There's nothing for you to feel guilty about, Nozomi. I take full responsibility for this decision. It's not even your decision to make. I'm sorry, but I'm not going to budge on this. If this is a sin, then it's my sin to bear. I'll be counting on you when the time comes, Akizuki-san. I bow deeply. Nozomi seems on the verge of saying something. But in the end, unable to put her thoughts into words, she closes her mouth. Listen, Nozomi. Eliminating the red butterfly will only be our last resort. But until we have no other option, we're going to try our best to save her. I place a hand on her shoulder to reassure her. At last, she seems to cheer up a little. I can't wait to see or find out what it reincarnates into. This is going to be fun. I hope. Nozomi, Yes, boss. Alright. We'll see what we can do. Agreed. Out of all of us, Nozomi is the one who's the most concerned about the red butterfly, clearly. For God knows why. Even though she's the one being haunted by her and almost killed twice by the homicidal butterfly, she truly is a kind girl. Almost to a fault. Nozomi pulls out her phone and swipes across the screen. Kosei-kun, What did he say? Oh. But it's not Sunday. Yeah, Nozomi. Kosei-kun. What up, Suegro? When we pass by the shrine, Okuro-san comes out to greet us. Smiling. Welcome back, Okuro-san. Did you manage to get that truffle of business resolved? Yeah, I managed to get that resolved. Huh? Uh, 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 crap. Occupied with the red butterfly, Nozomi and I had spent the past several days absent from class, but we'd forgotten to come up with a suitable excuse. I looked at Nozomi for help. Let's <laughs> get there. Don't worry, I'll improvise my way out of this. Just follow my lead. Nozomi communicates to me using her eyes. Are you sure? I ask her silently. All women are born actresses, didn't you know that? What are you saying? He he he, feast your eyes on my flawless acting skills. Nozomi replies confidently. I don't exactly know why, but she seems extremely sure of herself. Well, let's see what she can do. This is terrible. Huh? You call that flawless acting? First of all, that was an awful lie. Okuru-san would know if he had some kind of condition. There's no way he's gonna buy that. <laughs> he fell right for it. Look at his face, too. Ah! He bought it? Okuru-san, you trust your daughter way too much. It's almost impressive how unconvincing that was. Also, I'm pretty sure hiccups don't qualify as a condition. So, so it, was that why she was so confident? Because that dude, like, believes her on everything?
Well, impressed, aren't you? You had no idea I was such a cunning liar, did you? And so many throws one last smile over her shoulder as her dad drags her away. I'm impressed, alright. Impressed by... Impressed you had the guts to think you could fool anyone with a performance like that. Well, I guess it all worked out in the end. At any rate, now and Nozomi had an excuse to take a break from school until Sunday. I'd be laughing if I was there. And then he'd know for sure that it has to be a lie. Or who knows? They might be gullible enough to fall for it. That is, if her parents don't find out she's lying. Anyway, now that I'm alone, I head towards the shrine grounds. Yep, nothing here. I comb through every nook and cranny of the shrine office. That's such a cool looking shrine. I, I really like this animation. Animations in this game. Mm. Nice. Looking for a book, a document, anything that could tell me more about the shrine's history. I'd searched through most of Nozomi's house as well, but had found nothing. Thus, I'd came to the conclusion that this was the only place in that Kai was trying to have to search. Oh, here's something. Looks like an old scroll. <coughs> <coughs> the moment I picked it up, it kicks up a cloud of dust. The parchment is tattered and musty. I unfurl it gently, careful not to tear it. This is entirely in ancient Japanese, and it's written in calligraphy too. I can't read a word of this. I frown at the floor and brush strokes, struggling to decipher them. Aren't you supposed to be dying? While I'm busy poring over the scroll, Nozomi suddenly pokes her face into the office. Oh, Nozomi, recovered from your chronic conditions already? <laughs> no wonder, you were never sick in the first place. Well, good for you. But try not to worry your dad too much. I don't know what to expect out of this route anymore. Nozomi wraps her arms around herself and begins to shiver. I want to rush over to her immediately, but I can't. cough. <laughs> Stabbing pain pierces my chest and I find myself unable to breathe. Breaking in the cold sweat, I collapse to the ground, coughing violently. <laughs> what the freak? Nozomi calls out to me, blood draining from her face, but I can't see her. My vision is darkening. No, this isn't black. R red? Nozomi, I see red. <laughs> From the sound of her sobs and the feeling of her hand grip in mine, I could tell that Nozomi is crouched beside me. Dang it, I made her cry. I have to protect her. I want to protect her, but I, I can't. <laughs> Nozomi's voice is growing distant. Why? Why is this happening? I flash back, back to those moments before my last near-death experience. Crap, I'm not gonna die here things are different this time i have someone i want to protect now i'm not going to die i'm not going to rewind time again i'm going to stay alive in this world when there's over <laughs> my consciousness is fading grasping nozomi's hand i have one final thought please please don't cry what the heck this is crazy. I was not expecting that. <clears throat> it was all craps and giggles like two minutes ago. Oh, I guess he is. Yeah, I feel fine. Strangely enough. Yesterday, I apparently had a heart attack and was rushed to the hospital. Uh oh. I'm told I was hovering between life and death for a while. But by next evening, I'd regained consciousness and my vitals had completely stabilized. Test results had shown nothing out of the ordinary. Although the doctors were dumbfounded, they eventually agreed to let me go home. 
赤い蝶が高峰さんを狙ってくるなんて後世は望みにとって大切な人間だあり得る話だろ Still want to protect the butterfly? Our expression is dark in Amikado's words. Nozomi and I want to save the red butterfly. But this felt like she had trampled all over our goodwill. One, you guys are idiots. That's gonna be him right now. Oh, that's crazy. So, I don't know what you guys are doing. In other words, you're going to eliminate the red butterfly today. I had a feeling that was the case when these two showed up on the skies. Okay. So, This is why I love you, Grandma. Akizuki san speaks softly, but there's an authority in her voice that brooks no argument. Right now, she isn't the usual friendly Akizuki san we know at work. Also, she's mad, mad. She's like, ah, nah. That butterfly is messing with my homie. But a slice and dice that butterfly. She's a grim reaper on a mission. Zomi's voice is somber and her eyes gleam with repressed tears. I can tell this pains her. She truly wanted to help the red butterfly even now. But after I nearly died, she made up her mind. Stifled the kindness, stifled, stifled, stifled the kindness in her heart. Wait a minute. The words slipped from my mouth. Please, just give us a little more time before I even realize it. Baka, what are you saying? Takamine Kosei. If you don't speak the same way, you can't speak the same way. What's going on? Literally, as soon as they walk out, the butterfly just decides to finish the job. If it's the butterfly, I still want to have doubts that it's the butterfly for some reason. If it's the butterfly, I still want to have doubts that it's the butterfly for some reason. It tells me that it's not going to end in the butterfly actually getting killed. That's right, Kosei-kun. But you felt sorry for the red butterfly. Blood butterfly. Didn't you, Nozomi? You said she didn't deserve to be killed and have her daughter taken away. You pitied her. You wanted to save her. Then don't give up. I know you're a kind person. The kindest there is. Ask me to help. Say, Kosei Gun, do something. I blurted out my true feelings. If the red butterfly were to be eliminated in cold blood, cold blood, Nozomi would surely be scarred for life. I can't let that happen. <laughs> Please just kill the butterfly. Well, I guess you don't love me enough. <laughs> Nozomi hugs me, crying into my chest. Softly, I stroke her head. I don't want her to cry. I want to see her smiling. So I'll do everything in my power to make that happen. Mikado, Akizuki san, were you able to learn anything about the red butterfly's daughter? We know she just wants to see her daughter. So let's grant her that wish. If we do that, her attitude might soften toward us. She might even be willing to be reincarnated. Really? Interesting. 
I have a question for you guys. Do you guys believe in reincarnation? Or do you guys think it's baloney? I would love to hear thoughts about this. I just find the whole concept of reincarnation so very interesting. So I would love to hear what you think. Let me know in the comment section below. Like son, would you be willing to stay with a zombie until tomorrow night? I'll join up with you guys later. Something else I need to do first. What are you doing? Oh? Here's something. Looks like an old scroll, cough cough. This is entirely in ancient Japanese. And it's written in calligraphy, too. I can't read a word of this. There's something about that scroll. Something about it bothered me. The moment I picked it up, crisis had struck. Couldn't have been a coincidence. I have to ask Rokuro san what was written in it. Okay. Why don't y'all stay together? How about that? Maybe so, but I don't want to leave any stone unturned. I'll do whatever it takes to resolve things peacefully tomorrow. Whatever it takes to keep Nozomi from crying. Yeah. Uh, that's a great idea. You and I can just stay over at Nozomi's house for the night. Well, that sounds like fun. Sleep over with the good old Grim Reaper. That way Nozomi and I will both have Akizuki-san's protection. It's the perfect solution. I reflexively pump both fists into the air. I believe in you, Mikado. I put on a show of confidence, flashing him a bright smile and a thumbs up. I love Mikado. I'd kiss you in the freaking forehead and rub those ears. Look at him, he's so cute. <laughs> we could have reluctantly agreed. Thank you, Mr. Katsy. You're the best support someone a guy could ask for. Indeed, he is. You know what they say. Um, bad weeds don't die easily. The moment Okuro's one spots me, he drops his broom and comes running over. From the look of things, he seems to have rather... to have been rather anxious about me. Yes, I'm completely fine now. I'm sorry for making you worry. I bow my head politely. Yeah, yeah. I'd appreciate it. Oh, and speaking of which... Before I can ask, Nozomi tactfully finishes my sentence for me. Oh, you あきづきかんなと申します。突然押しかけて申し訳ありません。いえいえ、とんでもない。普段望みがお世話になっているんですから。夕食は何がいいかな。高生君の前回祝いということで、すき焼きでも。六郎さん、something why would you want to hide that? Because it's cursed or something? Okuro-san's expression grows troubled. I don't see what other reason he would hide it for. He had to be. So, what is it? I don't know, man. That sounds like a secret to me. Does it have something to do with Lady Akaiwa and the origins of this shrine? Ah, so Please, Nokuro-san. Three of us bow our heads. <laughs> we relocate to the Sumizomi's living room. 
There, Rokuro san begins to tell us the truth about the legend of the Akaiwa shrine. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Well, dang. だが、その娘の生まれ変わりの巫女が現れ、お払いをし、神社を建て怒りを沈めた。Yo, this phony's dance here, even though she did a good job, supposedly. This is a considerably different story from the one that san had first told me. And he's right, it certainly is bloody. Hardly an appropriate legend for a shrine where people pray for safe childbirth. But it seems that the key point for both Lady Akaiwa and the Red Butterfly is still her daughter. What? After listening to the rest of Rokuro-san's story, I immediately give Mikado a call. We need to talk about tomorrow night. What? I was wrong. The red butterfly isn't waiting for her daughter. <laughs> this route is crazy. Seriously crazy. So very interesting. Quietly, Mizomi. I don't want to wake up your parents. <laughs> Having finished changing into her shrine maiden outfit, Nozomi softly closes the door behind her. It's the following day, late at night. After Nozomi's parents fall asleep, we slip out of the house. <laughs><笑><笑> Zomi can hide her apprehension. Understandably, understandably, of course. But have faith in her. You're the only one who can do this, Zomi. Zomi hangs her head. She's clearly anxious. Place my hands on her shoulders. I'll be right here with you, Nozomi. <laughs> At the same time, I'll protect you and never cost me my life. Don't even think about that, Nozomi. Nozomi interrupts me angrily. Whoop, so much for trying to cheer her up. Well, no, that's the point I'm trying to make. I wanted to die for you. Uh oh. Oh, okay, she bows her hand in the fist. <laughs> alright, alright, I get it. I'm sorry. The zombie pouts, muttering under her breath. <laughs> oh, shut up. I'm already being treated like a hand packed husband. Zomi steals her expression and begins walking towards the shrine grounds. Any initial hesitation she had had was gone. Instead, it had been replaced by a fierce determination. Yes, her boobs look bigger in that outfit. Yeah. We should go too. It's almost done. My God. Ah, <laughs> uh, thank you. And Kazuki-san quietly begins to chant. Litany of words from a world completely unknown to me. As she does this, I feel the temperature around us dropping by degrees. Whoa. What's happened to my voice? <sighs> I need water. That scared me. It's almost time. 
As before, a sound like cracking ice echoes throughout the Shrine Grounds. You stupid butterfly. Before us, the large, translucent butterfly materializes once again. Tonight, her voice is clear and distinct from the very start. Zoman, seated on her knees, gives the butterfly a polite bow. What? No, 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 no. This is this is them trying to lie to her, right? What? I got chills. No way. この神社を建て、お主の怒りを沈めた巫女の生まれ変わりなら。はい。再び赤い輪神社の巫女として生まれ変わるのは、もはや必然と言えます。that was one part of the truth. The Kaiwa Shrine had been built by her reincarnated daughter in order to quell her mother's anger and have been killed by a fierce god. But since her mother's soul had yet to be saved, Zomi's ability to sense the supernatural must have originally stemmed from her desire to sense her mother's soul. I'm sure that subconsciously she had always been yearning for her mother, always been searching for her soul. That's crazy! In doing so, she sometimes found herself sensing other spirits as well. Or at least that was my theory. That's a crazy theory that would make sense. Lady Akaiwa, this time it's my turn to speak to her. First, let me offer you my gratitude. Thank you for saving my life not just once, but three times. And she's the one behind that? What? <laughs> yes, until just recently, we had thought that you were haunting the Zomi. And we thought that you were haunting me as well because of how close I was there. <laughs> And that's why God wanted to kill Kose, and then he was brought back by Lady Akai. Oh my god, yo, that's cool. This was very well done. Wow, I never saw that coming. I'm at a loss of words. But Mikado was so sure that she was bad. It's very not like him to be wrong about these sort of things. That's why I was so sure that the butterfly had to be bad. Warping reality and fearing that power God took your life. But that's not all. Your daughter possessed the powerful soul of her own, and so he even took her life as well. When I say this, the red butterfly's wings tremble faintly. You let your anger consume you, and as a result, your wrath even affected those around you. Ultimately, the one who finally quelled your anger was the shrine maiden who built the Kaiwa shrine. Your reincarnated daughter. Her transparent crimson scales dance in the moonlight. To me, it almost seems it almost seems like she's shedding tears. According to the true legend, the story went like this. The shrine maiden who built the shrine also possessed a powerful soul of her own. In order to prevent a repeat of the same tragedy, you made a deal with God. You vowed to never use your powers again on the condition that your daughter be left alone. In exchange, God would not take her life, but would seal away a portion of her soul. While only a portion of her soul had been sealed, though, there were consequences. Sudden weakening of her soul affected her body as well, 
and shortly thereafter your daughter fell the illness. Having failed to protect her, you were overcome with grief and to this day you remained enshrined within the Kaiwa Shrine. That was what the legend said. <clears throat> but why didn't she say it? That's the thing. Although part of her soul has been sealed away, Nozomi still inherits her power, doesn't she? Whoa. It's like they were meant for each other. That's interesting. This is so cool. It's so cool. <clears throat> so there's something I wanted to mention because somebody had commented a episode or two ago how in this game that they feel like Kana's root would be the canon root, the actual true end, the true root, whatever. So now I'm starting to think now because I obviously haven't got to Kana's yet. And so this goes to the viewer that commented this like, I wonder why you think, and I'm not saying it like in a you're wrong type of way, but I am saying it as in, I wonder why you feel like it is canon when to me, based off of what I've already read so far, to me, this would look like this would be the canon because, you know, the shrine has a lot to do with Nozomi. And now we find out that Kose was also being influenced or had something had been affected by the red butterfly as well since the beginning of the game. So it would make sense that this would be the true root, you know, and not Kana. You know what I mean? Because like they talked about here, the red butterfly was also protecting Kose. So it's like, because in the beginning of the game, he literally died and he was brought back. So maybe that wasn't God, that was her. So that's what I'm like, huh? So if it's connected like that, then how could that not be the true end, the true root? You know what I mean? But I guess it's just one of those things where I just have to read or get through the other roots. So then I know what you're talking about, viewer. I forgot the name of whoever said that. But if you're watching, you know who you are. Uh, but yeah, I guess it's just one of those things where I, I guess it's just one of those things where I need to get to the other roots first and then I'll be able to see why you say or think that. But right now that's currently what's in my head like okay how is this not the true end because obviously like i said uh nozomin isn't my favorite character but i feel like this would earn her the true title you know what i mean like this is the true root but when nozomi and i started developing feelings for each other things changed my soul which had the ability to absorb butterflies and grow more powerful threatened to release nozomi's seal worse yet there was a possibility I might have begun absorbing her sealed powers too. And that's why. It was actually you who saved me, wasn't it? Whoa. See, and this all makes so much more sense, which goes on to support my thought of this should be or why isn't this the true end? You know what I mean? Why wouldn't you see it that way? You know? Akizuki san and Mikelo shake their heads. Why didn't you tell us back then? This is crazy. I thought so. I thought so. Which also makes sense on why she felt so strongly about this situation. This makes so much more sense. Oh my god. This route is crazy. Aww. Nozomi's voice begins to tremble. By now the eastern sky is growing light. In the still morning air, the voices of both mother and daughter quiver with emotion. 
私のことなんてよかったのに私なんてもう前世のことなんて忘れてた悪情な子なのに300年もこんなところで苦しいで<笑>あなたも母になれば分かりますよのぞみ母親というものは子供が心配なものいやのぞみいやたとえ神様と喧嘩をしてでも守りたいのよ<笑> That's crazy Zomi wails loudly. The red butterfly dances slowly around her as if to comfort her. She really is a god. Excuse me, guys. Timer went off, and I want to keep going because I feel like the end is very close, and it'd be a shame to stop here. She's Lady Akaiwa, the benevolent god who watches over children. Yes. 最初あなたに会った時事実を話さなかったのはあなたの娘への気持ちを見極めるためでしたでもあなたは終始娘を大切にしてくれた疑って申し訳ありませんでした That's all right. 最後に改めて教えてもらえますか、huh? What do you mean, final? 私は娘の幸せを見届けるためにうつしおにとどまり続けているのだと思っていましたでも違いました私は娘の幸せを守るためにこの時のためにずっと見守っていたんです That's why you saved my life. そして私は娘の幸せを守ることができましたようやく母としてあの子を守ることができましたバカミネさん、yes. 娘をもらってくれますか娘を幸せにしてくれますかいいえ二人で一緒に幸せになってくれますか Face in the red butterfly and not deeply and say I promise to marry her and make her happy. <laughs> right. As long as I'm with Nozomi, I'll be happy. And I'll protect her myself. I won't rely on any miracles. I'll protect her with my own hands and make her happy. But wouldn't God would want to go after Gose again? Bathed in the glow of the morning sun, the red butterfly's wings appear to melt into the light. Reincarnation. It chose it on its own? Oh. Almost completely vanished now, the butterfly flutters nimbly throughout the grounds. Beautiful. Almost make I feel emotional, but the freaking tears are not coming out. I just feel like crying, but I'm not crying. Rising her to rising her to feet, and the zombie begins to dance, as does the red butterfly. This is beautiful. I could imagine this like, like if this were an anime, I could like imagine how this would go. It'd be so awesome to see like live, like 
it actually moving and the dance actually happened. I feel like that would be such a beautiful scene. That is so cool. Mother and daughter together. Open my eyes wide, etching the scenery into my memory. Etching. I don't even want to blink. The first and last dance between mother and daughter in 300 years. I'll never forget the sight as long as I live. What? The red butterfly's wings grow steadily more transparent. Before long, only the faintest outline can be seen until farewell. With that final word of parting, the gentle butterfly leaves this world behind. Even then, Ozomi keeps dancing, in tribute to her mother. She continues to dance, beautifully, elegantly. As majestically as the shrine maiden of legend. A daughter receives her mother's love and passes it on to the next generation. From mother to child and on to her children's children. I've come to understand something now. People live forever. Even long after our bones turn to dust, our love endures. The bells on her fan twinkle brightly. A tranquil, soothing sound that washes away all sorrow and anger. She hears it too. I'm certain she does. Aww. Wherever that gentle red soul is now, she hears you. Wow. What a beautiful end. That's amazing. That's so cool. We're watching this, boys. Freaking awesome. I just got watery. I got chills. I really hope this isn't copyright material. Might just be. I don't care. Who cares? We're watching it. Dang, dude. This route was freaking awesome. So interesting. So interesting. I really need to finish this game already though, real talk. <laughs> I've been slacking it. Dang, I just realized I was about all all for killing those homies mom. <laughs> That's also why I didn't want to say a lot about it because something told me that the butterfly wasn't bad. I'm glad we were right in thinking that. We as in those three and myself. Cause it did look bad, but also, you can't blame us. What else were we supposed to think?
Gotta clap it up for this shoot. It was beautiful. It was well done. What a really good look. That was a good look. It makes me view Nozomi differently now. Thinking that she's the reincarnated daughter of the freaking Akaiwa lady? That's crazy. Phew. Well, that's all the non-combustible garbage. Oof, my back. After graduating college, I began working full-time at the Akaiwa Shrine. That's so cool. This year, I'm going to be taking over for Rokuro-san as a new shrine priest. Can't believe it's already been five years. I think back to that day the red butterfly had vanished. Even after becoming a working adult, I'd continued living in this apartment. Look around, it feels nothing. It feels like nothing has changed since then. But in reality, a lot has changed. For example, this woman looks exasperated when she sees what I'm staring at on my tablet screen. Why not? It's one of our fondest memories. Uh, we'll be fine. Still three days before we move. Alright, alright. I put the tablet down and stand up. I gotta say though, you haven't changed one bit. Not young, so much as childish. It's a compliment, I swear. Childish bridges forever. Brides forever. Shrine maiden wives are the best. Probably is. It's good for scientific uh, purposes. I'm not. Honey, she said. It's been a year since we got married and in three days time we'll be moving into that Kaiwa shrine. And then the Zomi's family home. That's so cool. It's true I've become the Sumi Zomi's adopted son-in-law. Say, Nozomi. Try calling me Kosei-kun. It's been a while. <laughs> Come on, just once. I wrap my arms around her waist. <laughs> I'm not forcing you to do anything. I just really want to hear you say it. As I tangled playfully with my wife, a thought suddenly crossed my mind. Think about the red butterfly, now so far away. Nozomi. Let's live our lives to the fullest and be happy. And one day we'll share that happiness with others. That's what we were born on this earth to do. I smile, stroking my wife's head. Well, this is weird. Inexplicably, I feel tears welling up in my eyes. Zomi squeezes my hand tightly. You're a good girl, Nozomi. I chuckled through my tears. I squeeze Nozomi's hand in return. My wife's soft voice echoes through the morning air. Far. Far, far away. Beyond the vast sky. Carrying our desire for happiness. To where the benevolent mother watches over us from above. Beautiful. The elite shrine maiden. Finish the zombie view. Well luck. Stoshiki. Ahaha. Uh -huh. Or all of them, they all deserve some love. Wow! We finally finished Nozomi's route. And we just have two more routes to go, guys. That's crazy. I'm gonna have to open up the guide. I had already talked about it with the same viewer that had told me that Kana's route is, to him, her, the true end. Or the true route. I had told that person that I was gonna do Mez. Mei's route and then Kana's last because I remember from the very beginning I was like I want to do Kana's last honestly I feel like I should have done Natsume and Kana's last but I jumped the gun with Natsume I was like whatever F it you know because I really fall for her character I really liked her character Nozomi's character I see her completely different now you know that story was amazing they did an awesome job with that route 
you know, every episode I kept coming back, at least recently, because I know I dipped for a while, blah, blah, blah. But every time recently that I started picking this up again, I just taught myself being like, I want to play this again. I want to play this again. Of course, King Chord too. But I want to go back to the root. I want to see what's up. I want to see what's up. Like, this is interesting. What could it be? Like, what's happening? Like, why are they almost dying? What's going on? Like, just had me thinking. And I was not disappointed with how it ended. Like, I had no idea what to expect. And it was just surprise like it got me it got me it was it was really good and when i said oh, what if it's one of the maidens i was that was a educated guess but i didn't think that was for real for real and now that's for real for real that's like crazy to think about because there's always basically a god too if you think about it in a way and kind of is like the collector of souls not so much it's just a sick girl you know the girl that's dying we got nozomi who's pretty much a god almost <laughs> I can't wait to see what's up with Mei and Kana. I feel like out of all the ones, out of all the maidens in this game, Suzune and Mei is probably going to be the most normal ones, you know, because Mei is probably, I don't know, I haven't played it, but I mean, Suzune was just a, a baker lady and, you know, nothing bad with that or that doesn't make it any any less cool. Like, that's cool. But like, Nozomi and Kana... And that's a matter of like a whole other level, you know what I mean? Especially Nozomi, like a reincarnated god, basically. Or daughter of a god, like that's crazy to think about. Like, whoa, that's crazy. Still, her character, I'm not crazy about it because of how freaking... I find her a little annoying sometimes, but I also really like her because she could be pretty funny. She has that spice that is like, uh, just, just enough spice. I like that. And she's adorable. She's adorable. But, man, it was a great route. It was a great route. And I can't wait to start May's route. I have no idea what to expect either. Because what we've seen is that she seems to be a normal... Any, she looks like the typical ordinary schoolgirl in an anime or manga. So, I don't know what to expect. It could be a completely crazy thing too. How she's somehow a god also. I don't know. But I was not expecting this from the zone. I was really not. But anyways, with that being said, I'm going to wrap it up there. Thank you so freaking much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please let me know by hitting that like and subscribing if you haven't already done so. And let me remind you again on that thing that I had asked about earlier. Do you guys believe in reincarnation? I would love to hear about that. Anyways, enough said. I'm going to let y'all go. Once again, thank you so freaking much for watching. It's been a freaking trip and I can't wait to start the next route. But anyways... I'll see you guys in the next video. As always, y'all stay safe, and until next time.